Foreign Minister, thanks so much for coming on today. We've had this SNAP Quad Leaders meeting convened overnight and we're told it was to, quote, reaffirm commitment to free and open Indo-Pacific, which is really the mission statement of the Quad itself. With that in mind, it's hard to escape the conclusion then that this was called to gently corral India, uh, which has been remarkably muted on the territorial integrity of Ukraine. Was that its purpose? I'm not sure I agree with that uh, interpretation. I think uh, the statement that has been issued by leaders overnight, certainly in the context, as you say, of uh, reaffirming uh, the Quad's commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific, also reiterates, and I'll just read briefly from the text, uh, in which the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all states is respected and countries are free from military, economic and political coercion. Our view at this point, given uh, the travesty that is unfolding in Ukraine at, uh, at the hands of Russia, is that it does uh, require all bodies and countries, entities, whatever they may be, from the G7 plus to, uh, to the G20, to uh, our, our colleagues in ASEAN, and in this case to the Quad, to reaffirm these principles, because it is these principles which are being violated so appallingly. All right, but isn't India of the four the odd man out here, the only one to abstain on that critical and symbolic UN resolution this week that condemned Russia. How do you square its, I'm using the word muted position on this invasion with the positions adopted by the other three countries, Australia included? Well, ultimately, that is a matter for India, and it is certainly our view that all countries should call out the appalling aggression of Russia, their violations of international law and of, of the UN Charter. And I know uh, that in conversations between Prime Minister Modi and, and President Putin, I'm advised that uh, Prime Minister Modi has, has said he believes that there should be a cessation of, uh, of, of aggression. Uh, but ultimately, countries will make their own decisions. What I would point to, though, is, of course, the extraordinary degree of unity uh, that has uh, appeared very, very comprehensively uh, across the globe. Small outliers who voted no to the UN General Assembly resolution, of course, uh, but uh, the, the great unity that, uh, that does exist, including in coordination of sanctions and effective sanctions uh, and of other measures which are being taken in relation to Russia All right, right now. Well, we'll get to sanctions, particularly Australia's actions in just a moment. One, one last one. The leader's statement from the Quad has told us about setting up some sort of mechanism to, quote, provide a channel for communications as each country addresses and responds to the crisis in Ukraine. Uh, what does that actually mean practically? Will we see the Quad uh, now focusing beyond its original sphere of influence, which was the Indo-Pacific, and becoming more interventionist and or united on Ukraine-Russia? I wouldn't use the word interventionist. I think uh, what the statement talks about, the new humanitarian assistance and disaster relief mechanism, is something which is vital in our region. And frankly, what uh, Russia's actions show us is that we need to be always vigilant in our own region in terms of such challenges. And so for the Quad to discuss such a channel for communications is, I think, an appropriate and sound decision uh, to make, a uh, sound announcement uh, to make make and something of which uh, Australia has been a strong supporter. All right. So stepping back from questions of quad cohesion, uh, the other underlying very clear message here is directed, I take it, towards China, not to replicate a Russia-Ukraine move against Taiwan. Agreed? Well, to any nation in our region, any uh, authoritarian state in our region who, who would think that it is appropriate to, uh, to make such moves in relation to sovereignty and to territorial integrity. But more than that, uh, I think it's a signal to and, a, and an important message to countries like the DPRK, uh, who have been consistently, again, uh, using missiles to, uh, to breach uh, UN resolutions, UN sanctions in recent uh, times. Uh, you have noted 
but also uh, actions of, uh, of China which have been uh, called out as also authoritarian. Uh, these are all part of the uh, important messages that countries that believe in the protection of sovereignty, the protection of territorial integrity, uh, and that frankly are now are currently motivated by the uh, egregious actions of Russia are pursuing. Can I take you to a New York Times report of this week, which I'm sure you have read, a very directly attributed to Western intelligence reports that indicate Chinese officials at some level were aware of the imminent plans for Russia's inv uh, invasion of Ukraine and may also have asked for that to be delayed beyond the Winter Olympics. Did that surprise you, that public reporting, in any way? I have seen that uh, report. I am aware of it. And uh, ultimately, it's a matter for China to respond to. Uh, but if there has been any collaboration, uh, and not just by China, but by any country, any collaboration with Russia in this unlawful and egregious act, as I've described it, uh, then that would be deeply concerning. And it is something that uh, we would certainly, with partners, uh, raise concerns about uh, in all appropriate uh, avenues and venues. And what would you do, Minister, what would you do uh, with, with partners to try and establish or investigate, if you like, the veracity of those reports? Because if true, they would be deeply alarming and you're saying there'd be consequences. Uh, what would you do to verify? I have said that they would be deeply concerning, as you say, and deeply alarming. Ultimately, uh, uh, these are probably intelligence matters that will be determined uh, in the way that, uh, that those issues are dealt with. And I wouldn't comment publicly on, uh, on intelligence issues. Would the fact of it, if established, make China in some way complicit to the international war crimes case that Australia is now a party uh, to trying to establish? Uh, I'm I'm not sure that uh, I would speculate on whether that uh, would, it would engage the application of the uh, International Criminal Court, and I think, uh, I think that is uh, potentially a, a long bow at this point. Uh, what I would say, though, is that 37 nations have supported the referral of Russia uh, to the International Criminal Court. And again, if I can reiterate, Greg, because it is very important that we remind ourselves of the strength of this unity uh, that is currently in place in relation to Russia's actions, that reference to the International Criminal Court, which enables them to immediately begin investigating Russia's crimes in the Ukraine, uh, is a very important step. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, though, for, uh, for, as you say, matters of, uh, of jurisdiction or uh, whether it attracts uh, the engagement of the ICC, uh, that's not something that I can comment on. All right. Now, we are hearing reports as we speak of the largest nuclear power plant in Ukraine being shelled by Russian forces. I don't know if you have anything uh, further on that. Uh, please throw it in if you do. But I did want to take you specifically to Australia's sanctions regime. $45 million has apparently been seized from a Russian bank account here. Whose money is that? Uh, well, I can confirm that uh, $45 million uh, has been frozen uh, in an Australian uh, financial institution. I'm not going to go into the details of these matters. A lot of work is still being done with financial institutions to work through the application of those sanctions. As you would understand, uh, they are very comprehensive. Uh, they have included uh, more than 300 members of the, uh, the Duma, uh, the political facilitators of, uh, of President Putin's actions. Uh, they have included a number of so-called oligarchs who are authority and influence figures uh, in the Russian system at extremely close to President Putin. So that work is underway. But it does show from Australia's perspective uh, that there are important steps to take. And the fact that they're being taken in unity with members of the EU, uh, with other Europeans, with the UK, with the United States, with Japan, with, with Korea, uh, is a very important uh, it, a very important indicator of that uh, strength of unity globally in opposition to Russians' appalling actions. You mentioned uh, the uh, the reports of uh, of active shelling of uh, nuclear sites in Ukraine. That just seeks to that just seems to me to absolutely reinforce uh, the complete breach of any aspects of international law and all aspects of international law that apply here of the UN Charter uh, and to 
to reinforce the unlawful behaviour that, uh, that President Putin is engaged in. Mm. Uh, the world condemns that behaviour and Australia strongly so. All right, just uh, finally on the $45 million, even if you're not identifying the original owner of that, a, a business entity of some sort or an individual, can you go that far? I won't go that far because that work is still continuing in relation to all of, uh, of these sanctions. Uh, but again, let me say that uh, we really welcome the support that we have received here in Australia from the financial institutions, from businesses, from uh, uh, entities that operate, th that operate here in Australia to support the government's application of sanctions and to make sure that they are implemented to the fullest possible extent. OK, it is expected that up to one million Ukrainians could flee. Australia's already provided humanitarian support visas are being issued. Has any thought been given, any consideration to some sort of air bridge or airlift from neighbouring countries? I'm thinking about places like Poland uh, because we've seen Australia is capable of doing this along with allies after Afghanistan. Uh, Greg, these issues are, are all being considered as, uh, as part of uh, our discussions with, uh, with partners and allies, as you say. Uh, not specifically in relation to, uh, to an air bridge to Australia, but I spoke to the Polish Foreign Minister, Foreign Minister Rao, uh, on Wednesday evening, uh, again having met here with him in Warsaw uh, just a week ago, uh, to reinforce Australia's support for the, uh, the very constructive and, uh, and welcome steps that Poland uh, is taking. He, he had some uh, extraordinary stories to tell about uh, what uh, members of the Polish community are literally doing as we speak uh, in towns and cities across Poland as Ukrainians are making their way into Poland. We estimate uh, through UN uh, offices almost one million Ukrainians to be displaced now. So Australia's initial humanitarian contribution at about $35 million uh, US uh, is going to be delivered through the key UN agencies that are supporting uh, the, uh, the humanitarian crisis, particularly particularly the UNHCR and the UN Office of Coordination for Humanitarian Affairs, the OCHA, uh, and the work that they are doing. All right, just bringing it all back home, finally, Minister, as an elder stateswoman of the New South Wales Liberal Party, is it your assessment that it has committed an enormous act of self-sabotage through this internal brawl over pre-selections? And are you now satisfied that there's a path out of that? Uh, well, there's no question that I'd very much like to see these matters resolved. I'm uh, uh, engaging in my own pre-selection process uh, at the moment, uh, as you say, apparently as an elder stateswoman, not a title that's been applied to me before, I don't think. Uh, but uh, I am very keen to see these matters resolved so that uh, we can get on with the business of making sure we're delivering for the Australian people and seeking, for the, re seeking the re-election of the Morrison-Joyce government. Resolved even by way of a federal, temporary federal intervention, which is what we're hearing? Uh, well, it would not be uh, the first time I have seen that happen in my uh, long period of membership uh, of, uh, of, the Australia, of the Liberal Party in Australia. I'm just focused on making sure that they are resolved and that we can get on with the job we need to do.